So now I flip from a long to a short, which is usually a bad idea, by the way. Going 100% uh, going 100% um, backwards, right? Um, from long to short is usually not a good idea. In my experience, usually the market will, whatever stock, not just the S&P uh, ETF, but any stock, you know, you don't want to be flipping from long to short quickly. I think that's weird because typically you're, you're, maybe I find a way to draw what I'm talking about. This is a bad habit I have to break, so maybe I should break it now by just getting out of what I'm talking about. Um, but, you know, basically, let's say you use white. Okay, so let's say you have a stock, it's moseying along, you decide the stock's a buy and it goes up, right? So you've been kind of long throughout this period. All right, green for your position, you're long. And at some point, you stop being long, so now you're just say black or near neutral. Let's call that white, a white color. Or maybe yellow. Yellow means hold and right. And then you decide to flip to red. This is sort of more normal behavior, right? Because if you look at the price, you find a different color. Alright, so if you look at the price, like, alright, so here, up to here. This is supposed to be a straight line. So you bought down here, and it's kind of a, you felt it was a buy. As long as it's in this blue box, which means basically up to this stock price, the more important part of the box is this line. Right up to here, it's a buy. You feel like at this price, you wouldn't buy it, right? Usually as things go up, we are less attracted to them, but that's not always true. And that after this price, right, the, the yellow line is really just a demarcation between yellow and red. Where above that price, you would sell it or even short it, right? So the thing that I just did, where I went from long in the green box, or the blue box, and I said, you know what, there is no yellow box because as soon as it's above this price, I decided it's in the red box and I want to sell it and short it. That doesn't make much sense because the yellow box represents what? The yellow box represents, to me at least, and this is my own method, nobody really talks about it this way. But the yellow box represents basically uncertainty. Right? This is basically. you're being uncertain. And I think there's, you know, there's nobody trading who um, is certain of anything, right? Um, so the idea that like, you've gone from having a long position down here in the green box, sorry, where you're convinced that something's long. It's over here. And then all of a sudden you, you're convinced it's a short just because it crosses this line. That doesn't make any sense because there has to be some period where you actually don't care, you're neutral. Right now, the difference is if, if it gapped up quickly, so here's another stock price chart here, where it's mosing along, it's mosing along, okay. Try that one more time. It's moseying long, and then all of a sudden it gaps up like that, right? That's not gonna be the best. Let me try it again. Moseying along, and then it's a really steep increase. Well, then, this remember the x-axis is time. It may just not have spent much time in the yellow zone. Nearly enough time that you would have time to even react. So then it feels like an instantaneous change is okay because at this price you're you're willing to sort of you know change your mind. So anyway, this is some some thoughts on like um, investing. So it turns out it worked out just fine. We made 
we're up again on our um, position, I guess. Um, I don't understand what this daily PL means, but oh, I think I get it now. Um, so we're getting a little lucky here in our first couple of days trading, but again, the competition starts on Monday, so it's not a Not really, haven't really gotten started yet. We're just. Amazon has only got till 2018. I want, I need older than that. I have to go to the 10K probably. See the explosion of profits that uh, Amazon had. Just look at that operating income line. Quite amazing. Uh, so it's not plus four, four nine, three. Interesting lumpiness. Um, very interesting lumpiness. You could see, like, I think they were on a downtrend of growth and then all of a sudden in 2020 the revenue increase uh, uh, the pandemic happened and there was a pull in of demand and now we're getting back to kind of the, I think that long term trend of slowing growth pandemic kind of saved the day for Amazon right all right, back to work. Uh, let's see here. Did we do all this? No, not yet. Yes, maybe, no. Pre-tax, correct, correct. All right, great. AWS, 17,459,000,000. Yeah, so AWS is, growth rate is kind of, it's just blistering, you know, speed. Um, we're not saying that the other parts of the company aren't growing fast too. They're just growing less quickly, I guess. Let me see. Let's do North America retail, I guess. And it's funny because remember, it's not just retail, it's everything but AWS. I don't know if that's actually the best. Let's not even look at that. Let's look at just online stores. That's probably better. 